Welcome everybody. Thank you for coming today. Oh, it's a great celebration.
by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Let us say in unison what a slight pause of the asterisk, Psalm 27, verses 1 through 11, beginning on page 617. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom then shall I fear? The Lord, the Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom then shall I be afraid? When evildoers came upon me to eat up my flesh, it was they, my foes and my adversaries, who stumbled and fell. Though an army should encamp against me, yet my heart shall not be afraid. And though war should rise up against me, yet will I put my trust in him. One thing have I asked of the Lord, one thing I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the fair beauty of the Lord, and to seek him in his temple. For in the day of trouble he shall keep me safe in his shelter. He shall hide me in the secrecy of his dwelling and set me high upon a rock. Even now he lifts up my head above my enemies round about me. Therefore, I will offer in his dwelling an oblation with the sounds of great gladness. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Hearken to my voice, O Lord, when I call. Have mercy on me and answer me. You speak in my heart and say, Seize my face. Your, Your face, Lord, will I see. of the Apostles, chapter 2. That day, about 3,000 persons were added. They devoted themselves to the Apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Awe came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the Apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They could sell their possessions and goods and distributed the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat>
Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. No one can serve two masters. For a slave will either hate the one and love the other, or be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life? And why then do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today, and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore do not worry, saying, What will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear? For it is the Gentiles who strive for all these things. And indeed, your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Samuel hears someone calling his name, 
and naturally assumes it is Eli. Perhaps old Eli remembered something he needed Samuel to do before morning. So Samuel goes to Eli, what is it? I'm here. Eli does not know what he's talking about. He did not call and sends Samuel back to bed. A little later it happens again. Samuel, Samuel, and he runs back to Eli. What is it? I'm here. But Eli did not call and sends him back to bed. Finally, a third time, Samuel hears his name being called. He's not sure if he should disturb Eli again, but he doesn't understand what's going on. Thankfully, Eli does understand by now. It must be the Lord calling the boy. We hear that the word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. But surely it had to be the Lord. So Eli instructs Samuel, if it happens again, here is what you should do. Samuel returns to bed this third time and waits. And it does happen again. The Lord comes and calls, Samuel, Samuel. And he replies, speak, for your servant is listening. I wonder how intentional most of us are in listening for God's call. In that time, are we focused more on our talking to God, or are we really listening for what God is asking us to do? Are we paying attention, or just keeping ourselves busy in the temple? Or maybe we would rather not hear God's call. Calls can be scary and are almost always disruptive. Take Samuel, for example. Today we hear the lovely story of his call, but what we do not hear is that Samuel had to tell Eli that Eli's family was going to be punished by God forever. Later, Samuel would lead the Israelites, which wasn't so easy. He did anoint Saul as king, but that didn't quite work out the way it was supposed to, and we could go on. Samuel's life probably would have been much easier if God had not come to him that night. But God did. And because Samuel was listening his life was so much more enriched. Today, we come to celebrate another call. In the fall of 2015, a young woman named Madeline Parks came to Sewanee to begin her first year in college. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. <laughs> Visions were not widespread. <laughs> and yet, a vision was granted to you. We probably could say visions are even less widespread now than they were in Samuel's day. But you had a vision, your first year in college, of a nun and a habit, the very portrait of Sister Constance. What a gift. But like Samuel, you did not quite know what to do with this call. You thought the monastic life was only for Roman Catholics. And while you were prepared to go that route, to follow your call, what a blessing to discover these sisters. A convent right here in Swanee. What a gift. You pondered this call all through college. You reaffirmed your baptismal vows after a year of catechumenate with the best sponsor ever. <laughs> <laughs> you broke up with your boyfriend because, well. <laughs> after graduation, you entered the organic prayer project here for a year and then began your postulancy. 
You sold your car. You endured all sorts of why would you want to do that questions. And perhaps most importantly, you have had your call confirmed. Your sisters have been your Eli. They have heard your call. And today, invite you to take the next step on your path deeper into this community with your first profession. You have become Sister Felicity. I told you got to choose your name, Felicity. According to the dictionary, it means intense happiness. Not just happiness, but intense happiness. Perhaps the kind of happiness one discovers when a call is confirmed, a vision is seen clearly, and there is a thunderous response when we open our hearts and say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Sister Felicity, may this day be one of intense happiness for you, for your sisters, and for all of us as we rejoice with you and pray for you in this next step of your vocation. And for all bishops and other ministers. For all who 
serve God in this church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. For the trail of tears walk today. As we pray specially for Sister Felicity, we also pray that those women receiving a call today will take it, pray with it, and respond to it. Pray for the upcoming elections in this country and for our neighbors in England as they choose a new prime minister. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life, for all the friends and family of Sister Felicity who are here today. Chaplain Melissa and Dr. Ward and their influence in her life. For the community of St. Mary. For the good weather, we give you thanks. Thank you. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Who put their trust in you? We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone, and so uphold us by your Spirit that we may live and serve you in the newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. of Jesus Christ, we are called to a constant conversion and renewal of life. This call is at the heart of the monastic tradition. In its rule, constitution, and customary, the community of St. Mary strives to continue this tradition. Therefore, the profession of new members is always a joyful, joyous occasion. It is for such an occasion that we gather today. Sisters, is it your desire that this novice shall be permitted to make temporary vows in this community? Yes. For a period of three years. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, it is our desire. The sister 
others have elected her to profession and believe that she is ready to commit herself by the vows of poverty, chastity, and obedience for a period of three years within this community. Sister Felicity, do you truly believe that you are called to live the mystery of the Lord's death and resurrection in this community? I do. Sister Felicity, we are ready to witness and receive your first profession in the community of St. Mary. In the name of God, I'm I am Madeline Hart, known as Sister Felicity, do hereby make unto Almighty God before the whole company of heaven and in the presence of you, my sisters and friends, the threefold vow of profession according to the rule, constitution, and customary of the community of St. Mary. To live in personal poverty, poverty of spirit, and simplicity of life, sharing my gifts and my skills, and holding all material things in common, my sisters, with hope and trust placed in God. To live a chaste, celibate life for the sake of the kingdom of God, striving to love God with all my heart, soul, mind, and body. To live in obedience to God's will as expressed in Holy Scripture, the teaching of the church, and in accordance with the rules, constitution, and customary of this community, praying that my will may be in harmony with God's will. This threefold vow I make for a period of three years and pray for the grace and guidance of the Holy Spirit to remain faithful to what I have promised. Amen. May the Holy Spirit who has led you to make this vow, uphold you, and sustain you day by day. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, whose Son, Jesus Christ, was lifted high upon the cross to redeem the world, we thank you for the sign of our salvation and hope of eternal life. Bless this cross, we pray. May it remind Sister Felicity of her baptism into the Lord's death and resurrection and her vocation to follow him through her threefold vow within the context of the community of St. Mary, through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. receive this cross, the symbol of your membership in the community of St. Mary. Amen. May God, our Creator, who throughout the ages has called men and women to live out their baptismal covenant within the monastic life, lead you day by day in the way of holiness. Amen. Amen. May God, the Son, who in his earthly life sought all things to be the Father's will through prayer and obedience. Be your constant companion as you seek to witness his compassion, love, joy, and peace. Amen. Amen. May God, the Holy Spirit, who calls us to new life and prays deep within us, strengthen you in faith, give you joy and increase your love, like the Blessed Virgin Mary, may you hear the word of God and keep it. 
May you, like the founding sisters of this community, be always courageous and open to the spirit and joyful hope. Amen. Amen. And may the God of love, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you this day and always. Amen. Amen. Peace of the Lord be always with you. And, and also with you. you.